Hey everyone, it's uh, the 16th of September, it's a Monday evening, it's nearly 6.40, the sun is setting because the old nights are pulling in now, autumn is upon us, and uh, I've got a bunch of bits that I bought today in the kitchen. I've also been buying some bits from eBay. I have bought spark plugs for the moped, I have bought headlamp bulbs for the moped. Um, moped's being pain in the friggin' ass to get running again. Uh, <laughs> I took the carburetor off because before you'd it would start, it will idle fine and as soon as you hit the throttle it wouldn't rev up straight away, it would take time before it hit the high revs and then it didn't sound good, it would cough and splutter a little bit. So I thought, right, take the carb off, and a new spark plug. I haven't got any actual carb cleaning liquid. You could get the spray that you're supposed to spray in and whatnot when it's running, but I couldn't find anything to soak the carburetor in. So I just carefully took it apart, blew it out with the air compressor, Put it back together again, exactly the reverse of how I took it apart, didn't lose anything, didn't change anything. Couldn't get it to start. I got it to sort of cough, but it wouldn't start. Held the throttle open a little bit, got it to start, revved it right up, that revved up beautifully. I thought, yes, I fixed it. Let go of the throttle, died. I've got no idle circuit, so I thought, what the hell? Had idle circuit before. Um, so I took the carb off again, gave it a clean out the second time with the air compressor, put it all back together again, exactly the same as I did the first time. Did not change anything, did not adjust any screws or anything. Put it all back together. Now it will start, but it will idle high. And as soon as I hit the throttle, it just bogs out and cuts out. So I've now got the opposite. I've got no throttle now, but I've got idle, a high idle. So I have... I gave up with it because I've only got a kickstart so I couldn't be bothered to drag out extension cords and whatnot because I haven't got a battery so I'd have to use my um, battery charger which doubles up as a jump starter um, and I really had hurt my ankle kicking that bloody thing over so I gave up for that day and I haven't looked at it since so yeah it's been a pain in the bum <laughs> I might put the old spark plug back in it just to see what happens if I can find it I did leave it on the, um, no, I may have actually moved it into the workshop. Yeah, I didn't go down to Mum's I was going to, but I got caught up doing a few other things and whatnot. Anyway, so, kind of progress on the moped. Um, I just need to get it to run right. That's about the only problem at the moment, other than putting the headlight bulbs in. I then buy a battery, put two new tires on it should go through an MOT there isn't nothing really wrong with it or I could just say assholes to it and just buy another carburetor <laughs> I'm gonna have a look and see if I can find anything about setting up a carb properly um, yeah because I may have a nudged the um, the um, idle screw that adjusts your throttle pin inside the carb and the um, air intake screw. I may have messed that up somehow without realising, so I'll, uh, I'll still have a play. We haven't got any further, well actually we have got further with the tractor. I'm going to take this camera down with me tomorrow and show you what we've done with the tractor. Um, it's got two wheels on the front now. My stepdad bought a brand new wheel. He's bought two brand new front tyres. You see, because of funds we can only do it bit by bit so it's quite slow progress um, we haven't got a spark at the minute but we found out we've accidentally put a 6 volt coil on it not a 12 volt and we've upgraded it to a 12 volt system so we made the rookie mistake of assuming that the coil we bought was a 12 volt coil but it's not <laughs> which means why we don't have a spark um, I think the firing order is right. We'll find out when we try to fire it up. Um, yeah, we've changed the generator to an alternator. It's got a new ignition switch on it because it didn't have one. 
actually I think about 80% of it was probably missing or knackered when we got it so it's been pretty much a complete rebuild we have obtained a couple of rear mud guards we just got to find the um, six inch bolts four of to bolt them on because <laughs> the original ones they were knackered you'd never ever have gotten those off they were actually seized in to the holes that they go through on the axle to bolt the fenders on um, that's, that took my stepdad hours to actually drill the bolts out and that's after we cut the bolt heads off to get the old fenders off they were just totally rotten they, they couldn't be saved um, what else so I've got a rough coat of primer on it at the minute just to prevent it from you know deteriorating deteriorating with rust any further not that it was actually that bad that chassis to be honest we still need the adjust the adjusting thing for the rear lift arms for the three-point linkage because our one has snapped we we're already trying to see if there was like pressure in the hydraulics you know to see if they will move and we pushed or my stepdad pushed down on it and the, the adjustable link which is actually there to tilt the three-point linkage like that so when you've got a plow on the back you can tilt it at the right angle wasn't electrical or motorized in those days or hydraulic you had to do it by hand <laughs> um, but yeah and it, he just pushed down and just snapped he just lent on it he wasn't even putting that much weight on it but just from age and you know general fatigue it just snapped so probably not a bad thing because it actually seized up the, the screw bit that screws in and out it actually seized up and uh, it was bent anyway so either way it would have needed replacing um, yeah apart from some body panels I'm getting it to start some paint and the back tires and wheels it's almost there <laughs> then it'll pretty much just be the niggly bits so anyway I went to a little place called all sorts today I do go up there occasionally um, and it's pretty much what I've always dubbed as a junk shop and I think a lot of people would call it the same you go in there and it's just a mess a mess that you can walk around basically and there is all sorts in there hence the name um, I have no idea where the lady that runs it gets all the stuff from but um, I came home with one two three four five six seven eight items today for 25 quid not bad going on my back is really yeah I'm not sure if that's sweat or water either way my back is wet my shirt's not wet so it must be sweat Anyway, what did I get? I got a little TV which I'm going to use as a PC monitor. It's going to replace the one I'm currently using simply because this has HDMI. I've been looking for something th roughly that size with HDMI on it because my graphics card has that option, but I haven't or didn't have at the time a monitor that had HDMI it's only VGA I think that one's VGA in there or it could be DVI um, it's a bit of a bugger because I did actually get another monitor for three quid which is VGA which is about the same size which doesn't matter I suppose I've got a spare um, so yeah like I said that is actually just a little TV it's got VGA on the back as well came with some leads and the remote control actually I think that's in the lounge I got a pair of Seisho speakers. These are the ones you can plug plug in an adapter. That's also an output there. I'm not sure what that's for. <laughs> it just says output on it. Um, but yeah, it takes four C cell batteries because these, as you can see, are quite large compared to the other ones I've got in the bedroom. I'll show you those just for comparison in a bit. Um, I just saw those and I like those and these actually sound pretty damn good and you can use them with see they turn on I've got batteries in them you can use them with them turned off like that obviously you'd have to crank the volume up if you've got something like this plugged in you have to crank the volume right up but yeah they work they work great actually they sound pretty good for their age and size it's 
some drill bits, 50p. Three. Yes. Three. Sony Walkmans. Obviously different models. That one's got the built-in FM AM radio. These two. Ooh. These two don't. But the amazing thing is, all three work. They play tapes are fine. Um, I was using some crappy headphones, so the volume was a bit crackly. But I think the volume switches could do with a clean anyway. I've already given the heads a bit of a clean, but yeah, they all play tapes great. Um, I picked that up as well, and I'm not kidding, that is the price tag that was on it. So it's pretty much 20 quid for that, and five for that. This, you're probably thinking, what is it, you know? Where's the value in this? The value is actually what's in it, if I can get it open with one hand. I'm gonna change things that are in it, though. It's like a little tool kit, see? Got these crappy screwdrivers that I absolutely hate. I hate them because I just can't grip them and turn screws. That's why I use my little Rolson one, wherever that's disappeared to. I had it out the other day, so it might be out somewhere. Or it might actually be in the screwdriver drawer. No. <laughs> yeah, I've got some cable ties in here. I actually don't know what is in here. I just sort of saw all that and I thought, why not? Some sort of test need thing here. Feel a gauge there. No idea. Screwdriver bits, a pen knife, a little box cutter, a pair of pliers, a torch. That's a plastic torch. Yay! No batteries in it, thankfully. Uh, I think then. That torch must be old. It's got a screw in bulb in it, look. This kit must have some age to it then. What have we got here? What's this? What is that? Ah! That is a pressure gauge. I think that's a tyre pressure gauge. But this one, got some sockets in there as well. I don't think we've got, you know, we've got that driver. So, what is it? That looks like a pump adapter on that end, doesn't it? You know, it goes on a valve. Is there anything else in there? No, the only items that are in there. Yeah, I was going to just have a little bit of a sort out with this. Perhaps put some of my own tools in there. Doesn't look like a lot of this has ever been used. I've got no idea what that is. A bunch of them screwdrivers there, and another bunch there, and another bunch there. I'll get rid of those. They can uh, sodden Z off. It's actually great it's got cable ties in because I was needing some of them the other day. Yeah, so I'm happy with that. Also got some other bits on eBay. Like my £1.20 vintage Miller Dynamo light. Um, the reflector is gone there as you can see it's repairable but it is flaking and it's got a bulb missing. But the rest of this lamp is actually in better condition than the one I've got for a restoration project. So, I'm going to use both and make a good one. A nice one out of a pair. I'm not sure which one I'm actually going to use. Because um, my other one has got big, 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 big dent in the top of this chrome ring. Whereas that one's got a little one in the top there that I should be able to pop out with a screwdriver. But... Uh, if not, I'll just leave them in there and then just uh, change the rings over, I hope. But this one's actually got the better body on it as well, to be honest. And it does work, I have tried it. Right. The bedroom is just a mess, so I'm not even going to go in there. <laughs> Need a light on. My switch tracks arrived um, as the guy promised. I'd actually bought these and he'd forgotten to 
put a note up on his eBay saying he was away for two weeks, so there'll be a delay in shipping. So I think if you're like an eBay shop, you've got that option. Um, but he did message me to let me know, so that was good of him. And they arrived this morning. So I've actually now got my track lined up how I need it. And for some reason, that's still on the piss. It's this one, look, you can see it. If you follow that down, you can see that track is not running down there straight. For some reason, it is on the piss, and I don't know why. Hmm. Works, I've ran the train through it, but the train isn't working properly. Instead of having forwards and back, we've just got forwards and forwards for some reason. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it ain't working properly. Oh yeah, I've got an update on this little thing as well, this little sort of portable voice recorder. It does work, it plays tapes now, I did put a um, new belt on it, but I broke the wires on the bloody microphone, so I've either got to try and resolder the wires to the existing microphone, or find a replacement. There's a few other radios here that I got with all that crap that I bought, that pound each, got that one. That needs a new battery contact on one end, needs a spring, I know I've got some somewhere. In fact I saw some the other day and I cannot remember for the life of me where I saw it. Um, that's pretty much it, I've got a new fan. So it is still getting rather warm up here. I actually got this little radio out of the uh, community shop last week. Two pounds, I think it was. Again, takes C cell. Should last a lot longer than a radio that's got double A's in. Oh, I'm gonna have to um, take some photos of some diecast cars because I've got some doubles. Because I'd be of a dickhead and actually managed to buy duplicates like this one. I don't know how the heck I managed to pick up two the same. I thought I'd picked up all different. Um, so I've left that one in its packet. I think I'll take a photo and put them up on the Diecast Scrapyard on Facebook and uh, see if anyone is interested in them. I've got a bag full on the floor as well because Sainsbury's uh, refilled their box today. They seem to take their time at refilling the Hot Wheels box. Because uh, it's usually, it gets emptied pretty quick, believe it or not. Considering these are now £1.85 per car. I remember when they were 99 pence each when I was little. But uh, not anymore. Nearly £2 for one of these. It's getting quite ridiculous really, isn't it? Yeah, but I suppose collectors like me are mugs in a way, because we still pay it, don't we? Yeah, the price of Lego has gone up over the years and I still pay it, so... excuse moi Oh, there's that screwdriver I was talking about earlier. With the changeable tips. I find that one's a lot better for me, personally, because I can grip it. The other ones, if there's a tight screw, I just can't grip the screwdriver and get them undone. Oh, pardon me. <clears throat> this seems to have a bit of a temperamental issue at the minute. It's working fine, but if I connect a third hard drive to it, it throws a complete shit fit. And I'm not sure if I have bought a bunch of shitty Seagate drives, all them 500 gigabyte drives, because they're the ones that seem to be causing the issue at the minute. Because earlier I couldn't, I had to shut the computer down with the button because the desktop kept locking up. 
And I only started doing that when I reconnected the um, third drive. Disconnected it. It's been working fine ever since. So, yeah, I'm not sure if it is just a bunch of crappy drives that some dick at a car boot sale have sold me, or if I have a problem on that specific SATA connector on the motherboard. So what I'm actually going to do at some point is borrow one of the other SATA connectors and plug that hard drive into it. If I get the same issues, then I know it's the hard drive. If I don't, well, then the chances are it's the SATA connector on the motherboard. So I used to get um, some issues with the SATA array on this motherboard before I even put these Seagate drives in. Um, you know, I could turn the computer on 10 mornings in a row absolutely fine and then it would come up saying no operating system found. Unplug any hard drives or drives that do not contain an operating system and try again. I would do that, boom, boot up, shut it down, plug them all back in and it would boot up fine after that. And it could be fine for a week or two and then it'll do the same thing. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a right pain in the backside lately. It seems to be getting worse. So I'm actually wondering if it is actually these Seagate hard drives or if there is actually an issue on that specific SAR connector. Because all the others seem to be working absolutely fine. It's just when I plug one in on that one I get problems and you can't tell me you know that out of four or five hard drives they're all dodgy. I know Seagate's not the best but I haven't got a machine set up that I can chuck them on to double check them either. Hmm. Me thinks I might have to um, make one. Perhaps that free computer I got, perhaps that's what I can turn that into. The uh, the test rig to throw video cards in and whatnot just to make sure they work. That actually sounds like a plan. I could do that later actually, it just needs Windows 10 chucking on it or something like that. Anywho, I'm going to shut this vlog down. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'll talk to you all again soon. Bye.